Hello, this is uh, Silvano Guy. Today I am here again with my dear friend Dinesh Dutt to have a short video on uh, closed network. As I mentioned before, Dinesh is an expert on closed network. Dinesh, thank you for participating to this video. Hey, Silvano. Hello, everyone. It's good to be back on this uh, video series of trying to talk about class and explain class. It's 2020, but I still find there are lots of people who don't fully understand class. And hopefully this is another way with, through a video to explain what a class network looks like and what its characteristic properties are. So Dinesh will do all the work, will do all the explanation. I'll try to scribe on the video what he's saying. The class topology that you see in front of you is the blueprint for all network topologies that data centers are built around with. This new topology started with the hyperscalers and has now gone on to be pretty much the blueprint for all data center networks, whether you are an enterprise, you are a small business, or you are a hyperscaler. We'll start with a small version of it. This is the minimal version of the class topology. It's also called the leaf spine topology. As you can see, it consists of the first layer of switches, which are called the leaves, connected to a second layer of switches, which are called the spines. The simple characteristic of this is that every leaf is connected to every spine, and every spine obviously is now connected to every leaf. The reason why this is a low cost, high bandwidth network is it's high bandwidth, first because the amount of bandwidth that exists between the leaf and the spine, and therefore between any two leaves, is directly proportional to the link capacity, the individual link capacity and the number of spines you have. Unlike a classical access aggregation topology that existed before, every single link between the leaf and the spine is utilized in this topology. Therefore, if I want to build, assuming 10 gig links, uh, 80 gig link network, all I have to do is put eight spines. If it is a 100 gig link, I get a 800 gig interconnectivity between any two leaves. This is low cost because each of those individual boxes can be quite small, which means you can buy them as fixed unit boxes, which are always cheaper than chassis boxes. Given the network disaggregation movement uh, that came about, you can buy these from different vendors, not just the traditional vendors. The second thing is because of the network disaggregation movement, the cabling that you use between these switches are also something that you can buy for a far lower price than you could before. This is the primary characteristics of a class topology. Two tier, this is called a two tier class topology. You've got a series of leaves, a series of spines. The leaves are connected to every spine and the traffic between any two leaves can use any of the spines that's there to reach the leaf. The next part of this is how are servers or the endpoints connected to the topology. There are two ways in which servers are attached to this topology. One is the hyperscaler or a large network model where a server is singly attached to a leaf, meaning the server has a single NIC attachment to a single leaf. The second, which is more prevalent in enterprise networks and in smaller networks, is when you have a server connect to a pair of leaves. When you have a server connected to a pair of leaves, the servers form a bond and the pair of leaves to which they are connected use a technology like MLAG to provide the illusion of a single switch, thereby giving the server the ability to use both uplinks as active-active, though they are connected to two different switches. In some of the newer technologies that are coming out, such as eVPN, you can dual attach the servers without relying on a proprietary technology like MLAG, but that's for a later discussion. When you are connecting the server to the two leaves, or when you have got a singly attached server, the fundamental characteristic of this is the bridge never extends beyond the leaf to which the server is connected. In the case of dual attach, the bridge exists only between the pair of leaves to which the server is attached and the server itself. In the case of singly attached, everything that's in a single rack or all the, only the leaf to which that server is attached encompasses a single bridge, which means layer two is only between the server and the leaf. And after that, everything is layer three. The next part is, what are the characteristics of this topology? There are two things to think about are how this topology works in connection to the rest of the network. And the second is, what are the forwarding characteristics? 
the way this topology is connected to the rest of the network is classically through an additional pair of leaves which is called the exit leaves which connect to an edge router and thereby to the rest of the network or if you have a very small network you connect all of the spines to the edge router and thereby to the rest of the network or the world. The important characteristic here is that you use the leaf or all of the spines to connect to the rest of the network and you create two extra leaves which are called the exit leaves. If you are a very large network with more than just uh, a small set you can have more exit leaves you don't have to have just two but two is the minimum. The second part we talked about the forwarding characteristics earlier we said that it involves routing so essentially you use IP routing to distribute the traffic across all of the spines to reach any of the leaves. The classical protocols routing protocols that are used is eBGP by itself without any underlying IGP as a routing protocol or you use something like OSPF as a routing protocol. But essentially in this topology all links are utilized to forward packets and this topology also has the characteristic that the failure domain is extremely constrained to only the places that fail. So when if a leaf goes down the only thing that is affected are the servers attached to the leaf. If a spine goes down there are other spines through which you can have the leaves talk to each other. If a leaf loses connectivity to one of the spines all the other leaves can talk to each other through all the spines and they can talk to the leaf that lost the connection to the spine through the remaining spines to which it is connected. So the last part is this is a purely L3 topology. We'll talk about how to build larger versions of the network using this fundamental rubric of leaf and spine in the next episode. But in this episode I want to leave with one last thing. How do you deal with networks or applications that still require L2 adjacency such as storage networks that use broadcast or uh, multicast for heartbeat and discovery? Essentially you use network virtualization. We'll talk about network virtualization in a later episode. So with this short presentation, I hope I explained the fundamentals of a class topology. In the future episodes, we'll talk about other aspects such as how do you scale this topology, what are other characteristics of this topology, the routing protocols that are used, and network virtualization. Thank you so much, Dinesh, for doing this. This was very helpful. I'll talk to you again in the next episode. Uh, don't forget to follow me on my GitHub pages blog, silvanoguy.github.io. Thank you for listening.